Welcome to the second part of our series on cointegration tests in Stata. In the first part of the series, we mentioned that after performing stationarity tests, you are likely to have three outcomes. Outcome one could be that the series are integrated of order zero, that is, they are stationary in level. The second outcome could be that the series are integrated of order one, that is, stationary after false difference. While the third outcome could be that the series are integrated of different orders, having a combination of I.O. and I.1 series. In part one, we looked at series being integrated of order zero. In this tutorial, we are only concentrating on when the series are integrated of order one. If that is the case, it implies that the variables are stationary in first difference, that is, they are all integrated of order one. In this situation, it is necessary to perform the cointegration test to establish whether a long-run relationship exists between or among the variables. In this situation, we assume that a long-run relationship exists in the model despite the fact that the variables are either drifting apart, trending upwards, or trending downwards. Two prominent cointegration tests can be applied, as it is in the empirical literature. You have the Engelgrander cointegration or the Johansson cointegration test. In this tutorial, I will only be limiting uh, teaching on uh, Johansson cointegration test in Stata. What is a null hypothesis? It simply means no cointegration equation while the alternative is that the null is not true or there are cointegrated equations in the model. An important thing to note in performing Johansson cointegration tests is that this test must be performed on the level form of the variables, not on their false difference. It is also okay to use the log transformation of the variables in their raw form as I've done. So please do not use the false difference if you are performing cointegration. Only the level form or the log transformation form of the raw variables, as I've done in this example. And what is the decision criteria? Rejection is at the 5% level. And the cointegration test output gives us two results, the trace and the max statistics. If the values from these statistics are greater than 5% critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we fail to reject the null. So let's move on to Stata and work out an example. I have here Stata already launched, and I also have my do file. I always use the do file in my Stata tutorials. It makes analysis or uh, training very easy to conduct. I don't have to type um, all the time. So make sure you know how to open a do file if you are using the Stata interface. In this tutorial, by typing browse here, I'm going to show you the variables I have in my data editor. I'm using three variables for this tutorial, GDP, PCE, and PDI. And I'll be using them in their long transformation. I have the log of GDP, log of PCE, and the log of PDI, all uh, in their raw form. This is the difference of the variables, but I'll not be using this. I'll just be using the log forms of the variables. Before I proceed, I need to set up Stata to perform time series by issuing this command, tset quarterly. I click on run, and I have the Stata feedback that says that I am set to run time series with my quarterly data from 1970 quarter 1 to 1991 quarter 4. So since we are assuming that uh, these variables are integrated of order 1, that is GDP, PC, and PDI, we need to run the Johansson cointegration test. So what do we do? We have to go to statistics, click on multivariate time series, maneuver to cointegrating rank of a VECM, click on that. Here, under dependent variable, list the variables in question. I have the log of PCE, log of PDI, and the log of GDP. Next thing to do is to go to reporting. Remember I said that two statistics are reported. The default statistics here is trace. 
So I have to check the max again so that a stator can report the maximum again value statistics. Here I click OK. Everything looks set and this is the output. We are only interested in looking at the values of the trace statistics vis-a-vis -vis the 5% critical value and the value of the max statistics vis-a-vis -vis the critical value. Remember the rejection criteria. Once the trace value is higher than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. Now let's look at the maximum rank. You can see 0, 1, 2, and 3. These are the respective null hypotheses. And rank 0 simply means there is no co-integrating equation. So looking at the trace statistics, we can see that 52.63 is higher than 29.68. So we reject the null hypothesis in this regard. Let's look at one. One is saying that we have one co-integrating equation in this model. The trace statistics is 17.9. The critical value is 15.4. Again, we reject the null hypothesis. So this one tells us that we have more than one co-integrating equation in this model. Let's look at the maximum rank of 2. Trace statistics is 2.6 and the critical value at 5% is 3.76. 2.6 is lower than 3.76, so we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So here we agree with the null that in this model, we have a maximum of two co-integrating equations in this model. So this is what we have from the trace statistics. Let us interpret the max statistics here. Under the null hypothesis of a maximum rank of zero, we reject the null hypothesis because the max statistics is 36, 34.6, against the 5% critical value of 20.94. We reject the null hypothesis in this regard that we have uh, co-integration equations in this model. Looking at the second null hypothesis of a one co-integration equation, we also reject the null hypothesis. Looking at the second null hypothesis of two co-integration equations, we cannot reject the null hypothesis because here 2.6 is also lower than 3.76. So here we agree with the null hypothesis that in this model, we have maximum rank of two co-integrating equations. So the final outcome is that given what we have from the trace statistics and the max statistics, we reject the null hypothesis of no co-integrating equation in this model. We are fortunate that trace statistics and max statistics agree in this regard. Sometimes researchers may be in a dilemma, which statistics do I use? You can use anyone. You are open to use anyone. So again, we are concluding that we reject the null hypothesis of no co-integration in this model. I'm going to wrap up this tutorial by saying, okay, if there is co-integration after performing Johansson, what do you do? Co-integration implies that there exhibits a long-run relationship and that the series can be combined in a linear fashion. It also implies that if there are shocks in the short run, it may affect the movement of the individual variables, but there will be long-run convergence. So what do you do? You estimate both the long-run and the short-run model. You estimate the VAR and the VECM if there is co-integration. But if there is no co-integration, it means the variables will not exhibit long-run relationship. In that case, do not estimate VECM, only estimate VAR. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos, leave us your comments, and stay tuned for part 3, where we look at when the series are integrated of different orders.